welcome back to my channel. So starting out I have a fresh face and I really tried my hardest to do some sort of a pin-up hairstyle. Hair is just not my thing, I'm not good at it. So this is the best thing that I could come up with. I hope it looks acceptable. And now that I've got that out of the way, the first thing I'm going to do is take my Maybelline Age Ray Wine Concealer and I'm just going to apply this all over my eyelids, my brow bone area and a little bit under my eyes as well. This is just going to brighten it up and prime for any shadows that we're going to be using. First I'm going to be taking this colour in the top left hand corner on a flat eyeshadow brush and I'm going to be really densely packing that on my inner corner and all over my lid. I'm not going to bring this above my crease, I really just want to concentrate it on the actual lid itself to really brighten it up and really open the eyes. Next I'm taking this brown shade on my blending brush and I'm going to really define my crease with this and my outer V. I really tried to drag this up into a cat eye shape to really accentuate the sexy eyeliner that we're going to be doing for this pin up look. After I created that look I also dragged this all the way down into my inner corner as well just to really give that nice defined crease. Then after that I'm going in with my eyeliner and I chose to use my Astralis eyeliner for this and the way that I tried to line my eyes was as thin as possible as I could on the inner corner. Then you want to slowly graduate it out to get thicker and thicker towards the wing and then you want a really nice clean sharp wing and I did take my time with this. I was really impressed with how thin I got my eyeliner for the first time so I usually wear thick liner but either way will do. Any type of eyeliner for a pinup look is totally fine. It's totally up to you guys. I'm then taking a black eyeshadow on a very small blending brush and I'm just going to really concentrate this on the outer wing area. That's why I did my eyeliner first, just so I could really ever so slightly deepen up that crease even more just on the real outer corner to really accentuate that cat eye look. That's what I was going for with this whole entire pin up look. I'm then going to take two pairs of red tray lashes in the number 43 and I'm just going to show you guys me applying one because it's this times four. So after I've applied four pairs of lashes, you want to let the glue settle for a little bit. After it is settled I went in with an eyelash curler and just curled them to really press my real lashes with my falsies and then I'm taking a mascara from CoverGirl and just trying to generously coat them and blend them all in. Next I'm taking my foundation from L'Oreal and I really wanted this look to be a medium to heavy coverage just so I had a flawless base to work on. So what I'm doing here is just blotting the foundation all over my face. I'm then taking a damp beauty blender and I'm just going to buff that all in until I feel like it looks nice and flawless and as close to my skin as possible. Next I'm going to be taking that same concealer from Maybelline and this is a few shades lighter so I'm going to use this as a highlight. I'm going to really heavily pack this on underneath my eye area, on my chin and a little bit around my nose where I have any redness. I'm then just going to pat that out with the warmth of my hands. To set that all in place I'm taking my Ben Nye Neutral Set and this is a neutral set so it does kind of set translucent but as you can see here I'm really packing it on densely to really give it that white set. I really wanted this to be really nice and highlighted so I'm really densely packing that on the areas where I would like the highlights to be and then I'm just going to lightly dust it over the rest of my face as well. I'm then taking this light brown colour and the Major Look Angled Brush and I'm going to start filling in my brows. You can do this however you like. I'm just going to start running that through my brows natural shape just to darken them up with any sparse areas that I already have and it's no secret you can go ahead and do this however you like. After I felt like they looked decent enough I went through and brushed them through the spoolie and then I I also set them with a brow gel off camera. So I do have a little beauty mark on my face but it is covered up with my foundation and concealer so what I'm doing here is just taking a little bit of brown paint and just dotting over the top of it to really make it stand out. It really brings that pin up look to life. You can of course just paint one on if you don't have one. Then I'm taking my red lip liner from Essence and I really wanted to give a really crisp, really clean red lip. I feel like with any pin up look that is just an essential so what I'm doing here is taking my time and really carving out my lips to the shape that I want. For the lipstick, I chose Lime Crimes Velveteen in the shade Red Velvet. I really feel like it's just that perfect bright red for a pin-up look. And I'm going to really, again, carefully apply this over the top of my lip liner just to make sure it's nice and crisp and red. I did choose a Velveteen because they don't smudge. And even though I'm a zombie, I still want to have that crisp red lip like I was saying before. 
I got so excited I forgot to apply bottom mascara so I'm just going in with that same mascara from CoverGirl and just generously applying this to my bottom lashes to give it a little bit of depth because I didn't want to put eyeshadow there. And then I'm taking a bronzer and I'm just going to be applying this a little bit lower than I usually would. I don't know why, I just felt like I'd try it out and I actually really liked it so I'm just taking it a little bit lower than I usually would and then I'm just going to buff that all out to give it a nice contoured bronzed look. So this is the completed pin-up look and I was really impressed with how cute and doe-eyed it turned out. It's such a shame that we kind of have to go ahead and start ruining it now because I was really impressed with the way it turned out. So what I'm going to do is take a red lip liner from Essence and I'm going to start tracing out the design of where I wanted my ripped flesh to go. I was kind of making this up on the spot so I didn't have a clear idea in my head. Um, this is why I look a little bit confused while I was doing this. So I've drawn out the mouth area and then I'm drawing out this big chunk in my shoulder where the zombie has obviously bitten me, a little bit on my head and of course down the side of my forehead just because I thought it was a little bit plain. I'm then taking my liquid latex and this is a little bit thicker than your average latex and I don't know why I brought it off eBay so it was kind of just a random luck sort of thing. So what I'm doing here is taking some cotton wool makeup pads and ripping them up to get them really nice and fibrous. Once you have done that you want to take a sponge. I'm actually using a sponge for once, not a q-tip and I'm going to start applying this all around the wounds that I have just created. So if you've never used latex before, please make sure that you're not allergic before you go applying it all over your face. Do a little patch test somewhere just to make sure for safety. And also don't apply it anywhere near any hairs that you have on your body because it will rip them out when you peel it off and it does hurt quite a bit. I have done this before so please be careful when you do use latex. It's not as easy and simple as you think. And after that what I'm doing here is applying the ripped up fibrous cotton wool all around the border of the ripped mouth that I've just created. I'm then soaking my sponge with a generous amount of latex and I'm going to be applying this all around the border and I'm kind of blending the ends off into my skin. I wasn't too worried about how realistic this was going to look. This was kind of just a fun easy tutorial to recreate. So after the latex has been applied all over the mouth area and it hasn't set yet. You really want it to be nice and gooey so you can work with it. What I'm doing is taking the back of a brush and you want to start picking and peeling at the cotton and really making it in the shape that you want before it sets. Once it sets, you're done. It turns to this plastic thing and you can't really do much with it. So you want to just start adding more and taking some off until you get that desired shape that you like. So I repeated the exact same steps on all of the other wounds that I did with the mouth. I applied a very thin layer of liquid latex, then cotton wool over the top of that, and then a saturated layer of latex on top of the cotton wool. Of course, I'm being very careful of my brows and my hairline here. I'm then taking the back of a brush. You can also use tweezers and your hands to just pull and pick at the latex until you get the desired shape that you want. I also created a nice neck piece where it looked like I had been bitten. And this is what I've got so far. It took about 15 minutes to dry. You can use a hairdryer to speed up the whole entire process. Next I'm taking these acrylic nails that I bought from Kmart. I think they're about $10. Now they do have a hollow back to them which means they're not going to sit flat on your face. So the way that I applied them is I took a very thin amount of liquid latex and then I stuck down some little blobs of cotton wool and then you need to just saturate the back of the nail with latex and firmly push it onto the cotton wool. This is going to fill the whole entire back of the tooth and they're going to sit really securely on your face. They're not going to come off. So I just repeated this step for as many teeth as I wanted really and it is quite boring to watch so I did speed it up a little bit for you. Once I applied the two rows of teeth and I was happy with the amount that I had, I went in with that latex and applied a very thin amount. So we're just pretty much repeating that same process again and applying a little bit of cotton wool over the top. After you've done that, you want to go ahead and saturate that cotton wool. And then when it's nice and gooey and pliable, you can then take the back of a makeup brush and really push it and mold it into shapes. And this is going to really be helpful because you can pull it down into each tooth to really make the gums look nice and realistic. And then no surprise here, I'm repeating the exact same steps to fill in the hollows of the cut just to give it some more meaty texture. So I'm just applying a little bit of latex, cotton wool latex, and I'm not going to rip this too much. I'm kind of just going to let it sit the way that it is. 
Then after that I'm taking my foundation again from L'Oreal and I'm going to be using an eyeshadow brush to apply this just so it's really dense and it's very thick and you just want to go around all of the wounds to kind of blend this into your skin. Um, I mean the best thing about special effects is you can whack a whole bunch of fake blood on it if it's not blending in well which is what I intended to do through this whole tutorial. So what I'm doing now is taking my powder foundation and a fluffy brush and I'm just going to heavily pack that on. If you would like to have a more realistic look just do a smaller seam around the edges and it pretty much blends in a lot nicer but I was going for a gory look so I didn't really feel it like it was necessary. Next I'm taking this bright pink coral colour and a eyeshadow brush again and I'm just going to be applying this all around the edges of the wounds. This is the perfect sore and irritated skin colour for me and I love to use it so I'm just going to be heavily applying this all around all of the wounds just to make it look nice and sore as if your skin is starting to get a bit of an infection. I'm then taking this really deep maroon colour which looks kind of black on camera but it's not. It's more of a purple maroon and I'm using that same brush to apply this. This is going to be more of the bruising. So you just want to blend that in and just dab it around all the edges where we've put our sore and infected skin and I didn't really worry too much about the neck area because that's going to be full of blood. I'm then taking that exact same colour with a fine detailed brush and because it's so dark this is really going to give a lot of depth to the wounds so you want to just apply this right around the very edges of all the wounds to really sink them in and draw them back from the skin to make them look like they're a lot more deeper than they actually are and I'm also going to apply this all over the gums very lightly just to give it a little bit of two tone for when we apply some more colour later on. Then after that I'm working on the neck area as well and just repeating the same steps. I'm taking that larger brush again and with whatever product was left over on it, I'm just going to be lightly running that through the center of all of the cuts. I didn't want to put too much color intensity in them because we are going to be applying fake blood. So what I'm doing now is taking that fine tipped brush again and that deep maroon color and I'm just going to go in between each of the teeth to really give them a nice defined look. Next I'm taking Ben Nye Scab Blood and a modelling tool and I'm just going to pretty much smear this all on the inside of the wounds and you do want to have some sparse areas and some chunky areas to give it a really meaty texture. Now you don't need this product to achieve the same effect. What I have done in previous tutorials is I've ripped up tiny pieces of toilet paper or tissue and then you soak it in the fake blood and then you pretty much just apply it and push it onto the prosthetics that you've made with latex to secure it if you feel it's necessary and it looks the exact same, it does the exact same thing so you guys can go with either or product and just continue doing this. Next I'm taking Ben Nice Dark Blood. This is my absolute favourite fake blood. One, because it is a perfect colour and two, because it doesn't stain your skin. So what I'm going to do here is apply it with a stippling sponge and I really wanted to get that blood splattered effect. So the first step that I'm going to be doing with the blood is roughly stippling it all around the wound and this is going to give a nice splattered effect. Then I'm going in with a fine definition brush and I'm just going to start really concentrating where I want the blood to be in specific areas and to get it a lot, more, a lot more bloody and gory. So you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just going around the edges of the wounds to make it nice and glossy. The good thing about this blood is it doesn't really dry, it just stays nice and shiny. So however you put it on and wherever you put it on, it's pretty much where it's going to stay. So you can just go around the whole entire face and the neck and just apply as much blood as you like or as little as you like. I'm then taking that same sponge and I'm going to start stippling on a lot more blood around all of the wounds just to make it nice and gory and I decided that I wanted to create some nice scratches and some grazes as well so what I did was I started pulling the blood lightly over all of the wounds in the same direction and this is going to give the effect that they I have been like dragged or grazed so I also went in with a fine detail brush and I did the same thing I just dragged to the lines all in the same direction and if they go in different direction it kind of gets a little bit confusing so you really want them to be all heading the same way and then that gives it a nice realistic scratched look as well which I thought really helped to finish off this whole entire look. The last thing that I did was I went in with my Clara palette and I took the white color and the yellow color on an elf eyeshadow brush that's really old and I decided to just lightly tap that over the teeth to give them a little bit more color because I felt like they still looked a lot like fake acrylic nails but after that this is the completed look. 
So this is the finished look. I was really proud of how it turned out. It looked nice and cartoony in a way, but it still looked, of course, gory and beautiful. So I was really happy with it. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please remember to give this video a very big thumbs up. It helps me out a lot around Halloween time. And also, if you try out any of my looks, please tag me on Instagram because I would absolutely love to see your recreations. And I just wanted to also take the time to say a massive thank you to everyone for the 100,000 subscribers. You're all amazing and I love you all so much. And I thank you for all the love and support. Please stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.